Hey, good optometry morning. Glaucoma is an eye disease that could cause you to go blind. But don't worry about that because you're gonna probably die first. Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, YouTube eye doctor, and glaucoma is a genetic eye condition that affects about 2% of the population. And initially, it doesn't have any symptoms at all. Your eyes don't feel uncomfortable, and you don't notice any changes in your vision. But it can cause you to go blind if you don't get it treated. The good news is it's very, very slow progression and we have very good treatments that if you're using them and you respond pretty well to them and you keep up with the treatments, you may not ever notice that you have any vision loss and you'll probably die before you ever do. So generally speaking, glaucoma is an eye disease of the optic nerve. And so basically someone with glaucoma, their optic nerve might be a little bit more fragile than other people's optic nerve. And so it might be susceptible to eye pressure that could damage that very fragile optic nerve. And so because there's no initial symptoms that you might have, the way you're typically gonna find out that you have it is by visiting your eye doctor and they're gonna look for signs of it and they'll detect it before you notice or suspect you might be having any problem. So the thing with glaucoma is we don't have a glaucoma test. We don't have one test that say, hey, let's do this test and find out whether you have glaucoma or not and then we're done. But we have a bunch of tests that test things about glaucoma and if we take all that information and put it together, we can make a decision as to whether you might have glaucoma or whether you might be at risk for glaucoma. So let's talk about the tests that we need to do to look for glaucoma. So one is pressure. So pressure is a risk factor for glaucoma. Now, the normal range of pressure ranges from about you know 10 to about 20 or 21, and there's a normal bell curve distribution of the pressure. And so generally speaking, if someone has a higher pressure, then we're more concerned about glaucoma. And if you're outside that normal bell curve distribution, it doesn't mean you have glaucoma, but it definitely means you're at risk. And it's because there are some people that don't have glaucoma or have normal vision and are still have higher pressure than average. So we're gonna test the pressure. So there's a bunch of different instruments we can use to measure the pressure. There's an air puff test that we can do. We can put some drops in your eyes and do what we call applination tonometry with another instrument. There's some handheld instruments that just have some really light touches on the surface of the cornea. So there's a number of different instruments that your eye doctor might use to measure your pressure. And a thing a lot of people don't know is that your pressure can change throughout the day and from day to day. And there's a diurnal curve with your pressure. It'll vary in a range throughout the day. So every time you see your eye doctor, they're gonna take the opportunity to measure your pressure so they can kind of plot out, hey, what's your range of pressure and what's your risk for that pressure and glaucoma. So the other thing that the eye doctor is gonna always do is gonna take a look at your optic nerve. So when we look at the optic nerve, we can see signs that look like or look at risk for glaucoma. And so when we look straight into the eye, we're gonna see the optic nerve and inside the optic nerve, there's gonna be an area called the cup. And the cup, basically, if you can see it on 3D like we can, it's gonna look like someone's taken an ice cream scoop and scooped out some of that tissue and it's there's an indentation. And so there's something called a cup to disc ratio or a CD ratio. And that's the ratio of the size of that cupping or that ice cream scoop to the size of the entire disc. And that ratio can tell us a risk for glaucoma. And so, so the larger that cup is relative to the disc, the more risk you are for glaucoma because in glaucoma, the nerve fibers die and as they die, you lose more and that cupping gets larger. So if we see a large cup to disc ratio, we're thinking either you have glaucoma or you're at risk for glaucoma, or maybe that's just the way you're made. So we need to do testing to try to determine if that's a concern or not. So another test that we can often do is something called pachymetry, which measures the thickness of the cornea. And this relates to the pressure. And basically what we know is people that have a thicker cornea, and by the way, the cornea is about a half a millimeter thick. That's about the thickness of a credit card. If the cornea is a little bit thicker than average, we're gonna get a little bit higher pressure readings than other individuals. So it's important for us to know what the thickness of your cornea is because that's gonna help us kind of make a judgment call on how concerned we are about 
your eye pressure. Another thing we're gonna ask about is your family history. Is there immediate family members that have, glau have glaucoma? So that's siblings or parents that we're talking about. And I guess you could think about kids as well. So if you have immediate family with glaucoma, then that's a risk. If aunts and uncles or distant relatives, grandparents even have glaucoma, that's less of a risk factor, but immediate family is a risk factor for glaucoma. It doesn't mean you're gonna get glaucoma, but it means you're at a little higher risk. Now, another test that we're gonna do is something called a visual field and I refer to the visual field as the most boring video game that you ever have so basically in a visual field there's a big white bowl and you're gonna look into this bowl and then you're gonna look in there and we're gonna give you this little clicker and, and you're gonna look straight ahead and we're gonna flash some lights off in your side vision. And every time you see a little dim light, you're gonna press that button and it's gonna map out how sensitive you are to very dim lights because in glaucoma, it first starts to affect your side vision or your ability to see very dim lights. So it's gonna detect any abnormalities before you might even notice them. Now, this can sometimes be a frustrating test for people to do because they're sitting there and you're clicking the button, did I see a light, did I see a light? And you're gonna be tempted to look to it. So try to look at the light at straight ahead, try not to glance off to where the lights are. Um, and you're gonna feel frustrated because you're going, oh, I missed that, oh, that was too dim, that was hard to see. And that's normal because it's a threshold test, meaning it's trying to detect where you can just barely detect light. So by definition, it's gonna to have to show you some lights that you can't see in order to determine how dim of light you can see. So another test that we're gonna do is something called an OCT. And OCT stands for Optical Coherence Tomography. And basically, I tell patients it's like a high definition ultrasound that uses light waves instead of sound waves. And so basically this is gonna give us a cross section of the retina in a lot of detail and we can look at the tissue and specifically we're gonna look at the optic nerve and we're gonna look at the thickness of the nerve layers at the back of your eye because if you have glaucoma, your nerves are gonna be dying and if they're dying, then that nerve layer is gonna be thinning. And so we can plot out a baseline where your thickness is and then we can watch over time if that's changing or if it's getting worse and assess the risk for glaucoma there. And one last test that we're often gonna do with glaucoma suspects or glaucoma patients is something called gonioscopy. And with gonioscopy, we have this, len this lens that we put some numbing drop on the surface of your eye and then we put this contact lens on the surface. And basically what the issue with glaucoma, there's something called the angle. And that's where the fluid inside your eye drains out. And the angle is located kind of around the corner in front of the iris, and we can't really see it with the instruments that we normally have. So we have to put this lens, contact lens on that has some mirrors on it, and that can bounce light and let us look around the corner to see if that drainage opening is open and if there's risk for glaucoma because that drainage canal is not open. And so after doing all these tests, we might be able to look at all the data and analyze the, the results of them. And we might be able to say, oh yeah, clearly you have glaucoma. Or likewise, we might also be able to say, oh, clearly based on all these tests, you do not have glaucoma. But more often than not, there's gonna be a grayscale somewhere in between where we say, oh, there's a low risk for glaucoma or there's a high risk or a medium risk. And then we're gonna make a decision with you as to, okay, hey, do we wanna just monitor this or do we wanna look at start treating this to because we think there's enough risk that we wanna prevent any vision loss from happening. We've got a lot of really, really great treatments for glaucoma that can stop the progression. We can't cure it or reverse it, but we can slow it down and stop it so you never have anything that affects your vision. And so if you wanna learn a little bit more about the treatments that are, can be used for glaucoma, you might wanna watch this video right here. And if you wanna hear some frequently asked questions from some glaucoma experts, you might wanna watch this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.